Well, hello out there to all my beautiful friends. We are here studying the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and today we are doing lesson number 76. And oh, this is a good one today. This was one of my favorite, favorite ones during the whole COVID experience, which I like to call the pandemic. So today is also day 15 of my water fast here in Costa Rica. So now let's see, today is Saturday and by next Saturday, I will be eating food again. So yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So let's jump into this lesson because I, I absolutely love it. It's a huge, uh, squeeze on the ego because this is where so much of our unconscious and just all of our blind spots are. We, there are things that we conform with that we have no idea many times. So it takes doing a meditation like this and, and scanning your mind for things like this to actually know what is controlling your behavior. So here we go. Lesson number 76. I am under no law but God's. We have observed before many senseless things have seemed to you to be salvation. Each has imprisoned you with laws as senseless as itself. You are not bound by them. Yet to understand that this is so, you must first realize salvation lies not there. While you would seek for it in things that have no meaning, you bind yourself to laws that make no sense. Amen. <laughs> Thus do you seek to prove salvation is where it is not. Today, we will be glad you cannot prove it. For if you could, you would forever seek salvation where it is not and never find it. The idea for today tells you once again how simple is salvation. Look for it where it waits for you, and there it will be found. Look nowhere else, for it is nowhere else. Think of the freedom and the recognition that you are not bound by all the strange and twisted laws you have set up to save you. You really think that you would starve unless you have stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs. You really think a small round pellet or some fluid pushed into your veins through a sharpened needle will ward off disease and death. You really think you are alone unless another body is with you. It is insanity that thinks these things. You call them laws and put them under different human names in a long catalog of rituals that have no use and serve no purpose. You think you must obey laws of medicine, of economics, and of health. Protect the body and you will be saved. These are not laws, but madness. The body is endangered by the mind that hurts itself. The body suffers just in order that the mind will fail to see it is the victim of itself. Boom. The body's suffering is a mask that minds, the body's suffering is a mask the mind holds up to hide what it really suffers. It would not understand it is its own enemy, that it attacks itself and wants to die. It is from your laws would save the, it is from this, your laws would save the body. It is for this, you think you are a body. So what Jesus is saying here is, is it's actually our mind. We sort of put all of the fear into the body. Well, the ego does. The ego convinces us that our bodies are weak and need to be helped and fixed and protected. And, you know, of course, the outside influence with all the propaganda doesn't help. But it's really the, the weakness is in the mind. It's never in the body. And so the ego sort of projects all of that onto the body. And so then the body becomes the object. Anyway, it's, I think this, it's, it's an important paragraph that you should reread it. <laughs> there are no laws except 
the laws of God. This needs repeating over and over until you realize it applies to everything that you have made in opposition to God's will. Your magic has no meaning. What it is meant to save does not exist. Only what it is meant to hide will save you. The laws of God can never be replaced. We will devote today to rejoicing that this is so. It is no longer a truth that we would hide. We realize instead it is a truth that keeps us free forever. Magic imprisons, but the laws of God make free. The light has come because there are no laws but his. We will begin the longer practice periods today with a short review of the different kinds of laws we have believed we must obey. These would include, for example, the laws of nutrition, of immunization, of medication, and of the body's protection in innumerable ways. Think further. You believe in the laws of friendship, of good relationships and reciprocity. Perhaps you even think that there are laws which set forth what is God's and what is yours. Many religions have been based on this. They would not save but damn in heaven's name. Yet, they are no more strange than other laws you hold must be obeyed to make you safe. So again, this really peels back the onion in your mind on what, what is controlling you. And we have to look at everything, starting with, you know, kindergarten, our, our whole entire upbringing in the education system. We were taught to sit still and be quiet and listen to the authority figure in the front of the room and whatever rituals or things that you did. I mean, not that I think it's bad to like say the Pledge of Allegiance or whatever, but there were just things that were unconscious. You knew, okay, it's time to do this. I stand up, I put my hand here, I say these words. There wasn't necessarily an explanation or a, a check-in with you like, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this? This is why we're doing this. It was just, you know, you just did what you did. And if you were someone who went to church, you were subject to any of the traditions or rituals or beliefs in that realm. So all these different spheres of influence that have impacted you through your upbringing that you may have thought were just part of life are actually probably somewhere in your mind governing your behavior in some way. There are no laws but God's. Diminish all foolish, magical beliefs today and hold your mind in silent readiness to hear the voice that speaks the truth to you. You will be listening to one who says there is no loss under the laws of God. Payment is neither given or received. Exchange cannot be made. There are no substitutes, and nothing is replaced by something else. God's laws forever give and never take. Hear him who tells you this and realize how foolish are the laws you thought upheld the world you thought you saw. Then listen further. He will tell you more about the love your father has for you about the endless joy he offers you, about his yearning for his only son created as his channel for creation, denied to him by his belief in hell. Let us today open God's channel to him and let, us, and let his will extend through us to him. Thus is creation endlessly increased. His voice will speak of this to us as well as of the joys of heaven, which his laws keep limitless forever. We will repeat today's idea until we have listened and understood there are no laws but God's. Then we will tell ourselves as a dedication with which the practice period concludes, I am under no laws but God's. We will repeat this dedication as often as possible today, at least four or five times an hour, as well as in response to any temptation to experience ourselves as subject to other laws throughout the day. This is where you get to misbehave, maybe. Mm -hmm. That could be fun. 
It is our statement of freedom from all danger and all tyranny. It is our acknowledgement that God is our Father and that his Son is saved. I'm under no laws but God's. I think it's such a powerful, powerful lesson because I guess before COVID, I really, I just didn't remember experiencing this very heavy and scary form of authoritarianism just spreading across the world that I think I saw, you know, and coming from the Course in Miracles perspective, that whole experience was a reflection of, of what's actually in my ego, that, that it really existed, that there was this possibility that, that my world could be overrun by some external tyrannical power who doesn't care about me, who doesn't care about my health, who just wanted to manipulate and control me. And I mean, I guess it's showing me that I have a fear of being manipulated and controlled. And so that whole thing played out just for me. So, you know, you may be someone who didn't find anything wrong with the COVID experience. And maybe you've, you've gotten your vaccines and your boosters. And, you know, I don't know if, if you'll understand what I'm trying to say, because you may have like a slightly different thought system than I do about what unfolded. But some people are aware of what I'm talking about and agree that there was this really big exercise that took place. Um, and it just, it showed us how very, uh, I guess, manipulatable we, we were at the time. So when that was happening, I, I don't know if I was doing the lessons at the time or what, but I just remember, I would even tell my boss at work, I was in the army and uh, my, my boss would be speaking to me about what are the new rules about wearing masks and distancing and all that stuff. And, and I would say to him, I'm under no law, but laws, but God's. And he would kind of chuckle and he would say, well, Sherry, what about the uniform code of military justice and all this? And he was kind of being sarcastic too, because he didn't want to be a dick about the whole thing. But I was like, seriously, sir, I'm under no laws, but God's I'm realizing that and I'm going to do what's convenient for me because I'm aware that there are these military laws and there are other laws like I don't want to encumber myself just for the sake of breaking laws. But I feel like there's something's happening here. And this particular Course in Miracles lesson keeps coming out of my mouth. So, you know, he, I don't know if he quite got it, but I know I was planting seeds with him by my resistance to conforming and complying to every little thing that came down. And I never told my staff that they had to comply. In fact, I would offer to them, when you come into my office, you can close the door. And if you want to take your mask off, you're totally fine. I'm not going to enforce that ever. So, you know, it, I, I just had a, a sort of rebelliousness in me that as I was growing up, it just seemed like I, I was just misbehaving just to misbehave. But I just got used to that being part of my personality. So then during COVID, my misbehaving actually was being a role model to other people and helping other people because I truly believe that, that what was happening was unnecessary and unjust and all of that. So anyway, um, the other thing I want to point out too is he talks about in relationships, what are good relationships and bad relationships. So maybe within your family, you're holding on to some resentments and judgments because you're qualifying certain relationships as bad when yet every, every being around you is a child of God, does contain this pure essence and beauty inside of them and maybe their ego has really taken over and they're really expressing like a just a very uh curmudgeon -y or severely addicted or so, you know like there's something obviously bad about how they're expressing in their life but you know there's there is a purity underneath of that, that you could see, you could see the innocence in them. 
and it doesn't mean that you have to like do anything different for them but just the way that you the way that you reach out from your heart to them shouldn't be judgmental and you know it doesn't mean it's a bad relationship it just means you're the observer and you're observing something that's happening that is for all intents and purposes none of your business and not there for you to judge you're just there to love people and so there really are no good or bad relationships we, we the course in miracles talks about the holy relationship where all relationships are one and it's all about the giving and receiving of love so that's something to look at as well in this in this uh lesson today so have a good time with this take a deep look at what is controlling you and what are you projecting out into the world what laws are you following and then turning around and expecting other people to follow like who are you to tell people how to live and who are you to enforce these laws that aren't laws of god so take that in <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much i'll take another drink Whew. Yeah, yesterday I drank 16 of these little glasses, which my calculations tells me 16 16 ounce glasses does actually equal two gallons. But please check my math. Go in and look at that. And uh, again, only sip slowly. If you dare to do this, please don't do it quickly. But my God, that's a lot of water. <laughs> and I'm going to do that for the next uh seven days or six days and actually even into the refeeding period we're going to still be drinking copious amounts of water as we start to bring food back into our bodies so but that'll be something i'll talk about later i'm going to stay present today i'm under no laws but gods you're under no laws but gods and we're going to go into that today and see what comes up have a great day today i love you all so much thank you for being here and doing the lessons with me and I'll see you back here again tomorrow.